When subtracting a mixed number from a whole number, we need to add a fraction part. We'll borrow one from the 12. How many eighths make a whole? Well, eight eighths. So one is equal to eight eighths. When we borrow one, we'll just add one as a ratio, eight over eight. Now we have 11 and eight eighths. 11 and eight eighths is equal to 11 plus eight over eight which is equal to 11 plus one, which is equal to 12. Even though it may look different, 12 is the same thing as 11 and 8 eighths. We'll subtract eight minus three is five, so we have five eighths, and 11 minus four is seven. So our answer is seven and five eighths. The opposite of the opposite is the same. What this means is in the United States, we drive on the right side of the road. But in Japan, they drive on the left side. That's the opposite side. But in the US, we drive on the opposite side that Japan drives, which is the right side of the road. Therefore, the opposite of the opposite is the same. When we encounter a problem like this, when we're subtracting more than we actually have, we are going to write the opposite of the opposite. So instead of subtracting 18 and 1 twelfths from 9 and 5 twelfths, we'll subtract 9 and 5 twelfths from 18 and 1 twelfth. But that's just one opposite. The second opposite is writing this negative sign. So that would be the opposite and the opposite. Remember, the opposite of 2 is negative 2. Just like the opposite of negative 2 is 2. And in this case, one is less than five. This means we're gonna to have to borrow from the whole. So we're gonna borrow from 18, the 18 is gonna become 17, and we're gonna add one to 112. When we add one to 112, remember one can be written as 12 over 12 because 12 twelfths is equal to a whole. One plus 12 is 13, and now we have 13 twelfths. Remember the shortcut, when you borrow one and you're adding it to a fraction, the shortcut is to add the denominator to the numerator, 12 plus one, and that'll give you the 13. 13 minus five is eight twelfths. 17 minus nine is eight. But wait, we are not done since eight twelfths can be reduced. The greatest common factor between eight and 12 is four. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our answer is negative 8 and 2 thirds. And again, anytime you are writing the opposite, you have to do the opposite twice. The opposite of the opposite is the same. Negative 8 and 2 thirds is our final answer. In this particular case, we have 11 and 2 ninths, and we're taking away 20 and 1 6. And 20 and 1 6 is more than 11 and 2 ninths. So we're going to write the opposite of the opposite. So now we have 20 and 1 6. A very common mistake is to not bring the 1 6 with the 20. Remember, the entire number we're subtracting has to go on the top. And the entire number we're subtracted from needs to go on the bottom. The opposite of the opposite is the same. So do not forget that negative. Once we finish that very first step, now we have to find a common denominator. I prefer to find the lowest common denominator. The greatest common factor between six and nine is three. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. Three gets multiplied by six, so I'm gonna multiply the fraction with the denominator six, top and bottom, by three. And two gets multiplied by nine, so we're gonna multiply the top and bottom of 2 ninths by 2. This will leave me with 3 eighteenths and 4 eighteenths. Notice that 3 is less than 4, so that means I have to borrow. If this number was a 5, I could just simply subtract 5 minus 4 is 1. But since it's less than, I will have to borrow 1 from the whole part. And then this will become the 20 will become 19. And then I have to add one to the 3 eighteenths. But when we add one to 3 eighteenths, we are adding 18 eighteenths. Or the shortcut, adding the denominator to the numerator, and that's going to give us 21. 21 minus 4 is 17 eighteenths, and 19 minus 11 is 8. 
my answer is negative, I won't forget it because I place my negative sign the moment I wrote the opposite. So I have the opposite of the opposite is the same.